blessing. Lesson is don't stop when you're in silt sand. Don't try and get the hero shot. Don't stop, keep going. Off road, you keep going, full send. First time, dude. First time, there's gonna be some feeling out periods. We're all starving now. All right, that sucked. We got our asses kicked and it's finally time to go home with our tail between our legs. I thought, you know what? Let's get the out of the desert. But you know what? One more cool shot. We're out here, why not? What's the worst that can happen? All right, so I have a, uh, a saying for that. <laughs> yep. Why do one more when you do one, one too many? many? TRX racing through the Southern California desert. And beautiful, then? Beautiful drone shot. Go! All right. Oh, no. Doing donuts? Uh-oh. Starting emergency call to the SOS service provided by the manufacturer. To cancel, press the SOS or cancel button. On its lid. Starting SOS call. One Mr. Brandon Schaub scurrying out of his TRX. <laughs> yeah, that's painful. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we... We have seen the video. You don't need to send it to us anymore. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, all, all of you who did that. Thank you. Lightning and Holman, it is the Truck Show podcast. Uh, yeah, quite a few of you sent us this video. So uh, comedian, YouTuber, podcaster, Brian Shaw, former- uh, Not uh, a race car uh, off-road driver, though. He admitted later that he should have just taken it out of traction control. And uh, in the middle of trying to do a donut, it just hooked and sent mm, him right over. Kind of high-sided that's, it. That's not what that is, but okay. It's not what it- what. Okay, so when you basically flip, like you know that the, where I had the 392, the blue one, on two wheels? Yes. Right, and I saved it? Yes. The, the reason that it does something is not necessarily traction control. What it is is when you have your diffs open, right, if you don't have it locked, you stall out on power. So when you cut and the vehicle lifts, it sends the power to the outside wheels that are up in the air. And so now that the power, because they're open diffs, are not going to the ones on the ground, you're just rolling on those and you can't drive out of it. That's how that happens. Ah, gotcha. And so it's one of those things where he obviously got a TRX, put everything on it, but he didn't get a sense for driving the TRX stock to build up to what it was capable of. So right? he goes on in this video. He's, uh, it's Toontown is his new YouTube channel, Toontown. And he goes on to say, look... I let everybody down because I got my Kibi Tech suspension. I got King. I got wheels, tires. You got to tune 1,100 horsepower, all this stuff. And then he puts it on its lid and he apologizes. The other thing I wonder too is when you put the Kings on it and the body control module, like what what are they turning off on the Bilsteins? Because the Bilsteins are integrated into the body. I have and been so told I'm, that it just lights up the dashboard and eventually goes away. See, I wonder if that has something to do with traction control and stuff too. Like it's not sensing the suspension, so it's doing something weird because it doesn't know what's happening on the vehicle. Because that system with the Bill Steins is so freaking integrated into the body modules and the ECM and all that stuff. And there's also the jump detection and all that kind of stuff. It's all part of the same system. So when you remove that, I'm super curious, like what actually happens to the truck? Like what changes from a driving standpoint. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. And um, I won't be able to tell you because I'm not going to remove the Bilsteins from the truck that I still have because it didn't get stolen. Although you tried, you bastards. Oh, I wouldn't be cocky. They know where you live. <laughs> I know they do. And they might be listening to this My podcast. My wife thinks that they are going to return. They I, might. I am happy to announce Lightning is getting an alarm system. So it will bark next time they break my rear window. You're getting a dog? <laughs> it'll just make some noise and uh, hopefully the it'll dog shoot or the them alarm away. System? The alarm system. More on that later. I am excited to announce, ladies and gents, that Mr. Mike Finnegan is returning to this program. Yeah, and we've got some cool stuff to talk to him about. Uh, he and I were texting yesterday and he brought up some things. I'm like, stop. We'll talk about that on the show. So mm -hmm. we actually stopped communicating because i'm like i don't want to i don't want to ruin the magic now, how many times have happen. you and i done that it's like no no i don't no, want to know no, that uh, tell, uh, tell, uh, tell tell me tomorrow 
Yeah, on the show. Save it for the show. Well, as long as you're uh, announcing things, I have to uh, announce that I uh, I made it through my uh, my weekend uh, deal down in uh, Kissimmee, Florida, where Keystone Automotive, a huge distributor for aftermarket parts to jobbers and and all that, uh, had their big show, and uh, they uh, invited me down to moderate their industry expert panel, and so the room had twelve hundred people in it. Holy mackerel. Yeah, we had a pretty- Were uh, you- No, stop. Yeah. Were you nervous? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, of course. 1,200 people uh, did it for about an hour and a half, and we had some uh, industry heavy hitters. Uh, we had Brad Aiken, who owns uh, Aiken uh, Ford dealership in uh, Winder, Georgia. So paint paint this for me, though. This uh-huh. is this is what six chairs up on a big stage. Five chairs on a on a stage. So it's a panel. Yep. Okay. And you're the moderator. Yep. And are you? Do you have a list of questions, or is it a free yep. for all? Nope. It's uh, I I have a basically scripted program, and then in the middle, I'm on my own asking the questions as I see fit, and something that you know, worked with them on for a while. And uh, yeah, so the president of Keystone invited me up on stage, and uh, there was uh, buzz reels and music and live stream and cameras. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. I'm like, I thought it would be like at SEMA where I do a panel and there's like 100 people in the room, and it's sort of in- intimate, and you're like, hey, let's ask some questions and stuff. I, it's a full on production. Like, I'm talking 20 foot screens on so either wait, side of the hold stage. On. So you had teleprompters? Uh, teleprompters. There's even a countdown clock so I can keep track of time during it. There's a, a QA. So anyway, Brad Aikens from uh, Aikens Ford. I guess technically it's Aikens. Uh, Ford, Ram, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge. Anyway, uh, Winder, Georgia, they uh, are one of the biggest dealerships and then also have, uh, I guess, Wild Willys as their aftermarket arm. So it's basically a dealer that has a huge aftermarket side of it also, which is pretty rare. And then we had Steve Gilmore, who's the chief designer for Ford Accessories. So, I mean, uh, just, you know, no big deal. Just a chief designer at Ford Motor Company. And uh, then we had Mike Spagnola, president of SEMA, who you guys know from the show. And then uh, the last person we had was Tony Ambrosa, who is the uh, chief growth officer for Real Truck. And so, he's, as you know, Real Truck used to be Truck Hero. And now they're like and 38 brands. They own, yeah, a ton of brands. And Tony's background was, oh, I don't know, worked at Nike for like six years. And then he was at Under Armour when they grew from $250 million in sales to a billion dollars in sales. Oh, and then he's the guy that brought uh, Carhartt uh, back. And then now he's at Real Truck. So the dude has, oh, I don't know, a little bit of a track record. Quite a LinkedIn page. Yeah, quite a LinkedIn page. <laughs> so uh, we basically talked about, it was actually really interesting if uh, if you guys are listening, care to hear it, I'll get the audio, but it was basically talking about the interplay between the aftermarket and the OEs. So a lot of shops and jobbers were there. And the idea was, well, you have Ford Raptors and uh, Toyota TRD Pros, and you've got AV Bison Edition Chevys. What does that mean for the guy who's installing aftermarket parts on trucks? Is the OE getting a little bit too close? Are they starting to take your lunch? Or does that leave opportunity on the bottom end for people to who couldn't afford the top trim levels to build something similar from the aftermarket? Or does that even extend the price of the truck even more? Because somebody with the top trim level, as we know, perfect example, Brendan Schaub on a few seconds ago, put everything on a top of the line TRX. So the idea was walking through that process and hearing four points of view, somebody from the OE, somebody from a dealer, somebody from the industry, and somebody from a supplier of parts or manufacturer talking about their points of view of how the interplay is between OEs and aftermarket. So it's pretty cool. Did it get contentious where the guy's like, you're eating our lunch? Uh, No, not really. Not really. There was a few Q&As where there were some people who stood up and and to some, uh, some cheers and and stuff in the crowd, ask some hard-hitting questions about direct-to-consumer versus distribution and the availability of parts in that. But yeah, overall, it was a great panel. Um, I actually had uh, a bunch of listeners actually come up and say, hey, I love your show. And several people came up to me and- Did they say, I love your work, Lightning? uh, No. Damn. (laughs) I had people, it was funny, they put my picture everywhere. I was on like 50 posters throughout this huge resort. You had those uh, A-frame signs sitting all over the convention all over the center. And so yeah. like, I would be in an elevator and somebody would go, you're the guy on the poster, huh? <laughs> you know, which is weird. I was at the bar. Dude, saw you on the poster. Can yeah. I buy you a beer? I'm like, all right, well, if that got me a beer, I guess that's cool. So that was super weird. But I had several people say that was the most informative hour that they had this year, right? And so it was cool. It was a really good conversation. Well, congrats. So anyway, yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty I would like you to track down that audio if it's not a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get it.
So going back to Brandon Schaub, who put his truck on the lid, what if someone's looking for like a great learning experience vehicle? Oh, I've got the uh, perfect one. Uh, if you'd like to learn how to drive your TRX, I'll take you out in our Frontier mm-hmm. Pro 4X <laughs> and uh, teach you the ropes of off-road driving before uh, you get into something way over your head. When to lock and unlock the rear uh, diff? Uh, we can do that. Okay. You know, I've taken the Frontier out and I've taught people how to use four no, drive and I skid did not plates. Know this. And, no. Yeah. I've, I've got several clients where I've taken people out and shown them how four wheel drive works, what a tow hook is and skid plates and follow the leader and use different uh, techniques on different uh, obstacles and things can like that. Can you teach me how to donut in it without putting it on its lid? Uh, you can lead a horse to water, lightning, but- you can't uh, make him drink? Well, you know, sometimes he might uh, he might drown. Dude, you say that, but I'm, I'm a decent driver and I, okay. take, I take lessons well. Okay. All right. So I think you could teach me how to I, do, some, I could do that. some good donuts. We could uh, we could do that in the uh, in the Frontier Pro 4X. So if you guys are in the market for a uh, dependable, reliable, well built, awesome little pickup truck, you've got to see our friends over at your local Nissan dealership because they have got the Nissan Frontier. Been driving one for a couple months now and absolutely love the truck. In fact, took Graham McPherson from Go Fast Campers and Mike Rice out to lunch today in it, and Graham's like, "This is the first time I've been in a Frontier." He's like. This thing's pretty cool. Like, how how much is it? I'm like, 45 grand. Everyone has that reaction. I know. They're like, I had no idea. I just never thought about it before. And it's it's a great truck. So if uh, you want to find out more about the Frontier, head over to NissanUSA.com where you can uh, build and price one, check out all the features. And then, of course, they've got the Nissan Titan and Nissan Titan XD with the industry's best five-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And Holman, you probably didn't know this. When GM striked, you know when the UAW, the United Auto Workers, were striking, yeah. a lot of the stock parts that we use in the bank's upgrade kits vanished. One of which was the new 2020 GM oil cooler for the Duramax. We have a retrofit kit for all the 2001 to 2019 Duramaxes. We start with a base oil cooler and we upgrade it and give you everything you need, including a Baldwin filter, which we have specced out. Well, those those base oil coolers disappeared. As of today, they are back in stock. We have them, and if you want better oil cooling for your 01 to 19 Duramax, head over to bankspower.com. More cooling if you tow heavy, you know oil temps are the problem child. Head over to bankspower.com to find your Duramax oil cooler upgrade kit. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck, because truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted, we have the lowered, and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The Truck Show. The Truck the truck show oh, oh. it's the truck show with your hosts lightning and holman you know what's funny is you're doing that and you uh i'm always, mocking you i yeah i had it's for like so, five years you did it and it drove me crazy and now and now you don't do it and now i'm doing it uh i had so many people come up to me and go you and lightning sound just alike really yeah and i'm like no we don't i don't think so i don't think so either they're like, yeah, sometimes I have trouble telling you apart. I'm like, oh, I'm the one that sounds smart, and then Lightning's right, the gonna, other guy. I'm going to say something that you said. We'll say the same thing, right? Uh-huh. I'm going to take a drive down the 55 freeway. I'm going to take a drive <laughs> down the 55 freeway. <laughs> no, no, say it normal. You ready? I'm going to take a drive down the 55 freeway. Hey, are you going to change it in post and confuse people? No, I'm not. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to take a drive down the 55 freeway. I'm going to take a drive down the 55 freeway. I mean, we are similar sounding when we're just, if, if I'm not going high and I'm not going low, I'm just my regular Are you like voice. Bose? Bose stereos? No highs and no, no lows? Bose, yeah. <laughs> like I have a tendency, when I get excited, everyone uh-huh. knows, I get like, way, I got like 10 octaves up. Wow. Uh-huh. But I can go down like this as well. You now, should Now, when I, when I don't weird. want to talk normal, we sound I'm somewhat glad we're on similar. the other side of a table from you because that was a little, little creepy. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, baby. No, no. Hold on. I'm close. I thank God I'm close to the door. All right, let's uh, let's stop this and let's call our buddy Mike Finnegan. Good 
Good evening. Hello. <laughs> wow. Were you, were you in a, uh, a room full of pillows? Like, what was that? <laughs> Mike was in his closet. <laughs> Uh, were you, are you drunk? No, he's in his walk-in closet full of Dixon uh, shirts. <laughs> no, I'm on the couch with a broken leg. <laughs> wow. Wait, what? Okay, hold on. We need to know about that in just a second. Is this Mike Finnegan, president of Horsepower? Uh, you know, three days ago, yeah. Today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you're still truck famous. Hold on. Here we go. Famous hero, star, VIP, ace, big wig, hot shot, truck famous, big shot, big deal, big gun, big cheese, heavyweight, superstar, truck famous. That's what you are. And apparently he's also broken. What the hell happened, dude? That intro never gets old. <laughs> you sound on like you're on Vicodin. What's going on with you? We're going to have fun, Mike. No, I, I'm actually, a, I'm on nothing. I hate drugs, and so I'm taking anything, which is probably a mistake. So, how did we find ourselves on the couch with a broken leg? How much time you got? Uh, <laughs> have, you, have you ever heard our show? It's like four hours long. Yeah, all of it. We have all the time. Uh, For you, anything. Okay. So, here's the story. I um, always wanted a Datsun 510 and uh, found one bell on uh, so bring a trip com. And it was in uh, Carolina, right on the coast. And I was like, hmm. I could buy a Datsun 510 at the beach and drive it to a mountain and go snowboarding. And that would be a fun episode of Finnegan's Garage. And so I grabbed my oldest son and a couple of friends and we road tripped down to Hilton Head, South Carolina, bought this Datsun, road trip to Savannah, saw some alligators and started bombing up to North Carolina where there's where you can go snowboarding, which is awesome. And I've been there a bunch of times and about two hours away from getting there, the entire wiring harness from the dash to the headlight of this Datsun just melts down. And so, so, so far we like have three. alligators. We have a yeah. uh, rad old uh, a crappy Datsun uh, 510. Is this the yellow one that I saw? And we have YouTube fire. Channel? Yeah, this is the yellow one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we're you know, in the gas station and I'm like, okay, I can fix this. This is no problem. So I send my son and one of my friends to a parts store. And my friend Joe and I just ripping the entire harness out of the nose of the car. Just set it on the ground right by the gas pumps because it's really not that busy. And uh, and we just start cutting it apart and peeling wires back together because all the insulation's melted off. And uh, a time later as we're doing this, this convertible Dodge rolls up with a really nice guy. And he's like, hey, I just met Kate at O'Reilly's. And he says he needs some help for the Dodge. And I'm like, I'm like, stranger danger. Okay, you're talking and whatever he's, he's got a friend with him i'm sure it's fine <laughs> this guy turns out to be a dawson head and he's like yeah i've, I've, I've literally got a box of fat cuts and connectors at my house and the right crimpers i'll bring them to you I'm like and at this point because yeah, i'm you're thinking god is smiling upon you like you're at the point where oh. the clouds got dark and it was pouring and it was ominous and then all of a sudden the clouds parted a ray of sunshine came down and as the cloud parted the uh, clouds part you hear so now you're thinking okay all right the, the things went like from bad to worse to a little bit better to now this guy is coming and you're going up oh, i life is good we're gonna be okay yeah totally sir I'm sitting on the ground. I'm peeling wires apart. This guy takes off. I hope he comes back. If not, whatever. My kids bring an electrical tape and primary wire. We'll butt connect our way to the mountain. Well, this comes back in like half an hour in a mint condition convertible Watson 1600 Roadster. Damn. Wow. Like, That's awesome. And I'm like, it's, and it's way nicer than the car I just bought. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy's awesome. And sure enough, he's got the right connector. It's perfect because two or three of the factory connectors straight up melted when the you know electric system caught on fire. And so we band-aid it all back together, high five this guy, Sarah Eyes, his name is Jason, super cool guy. Shout out. And um and we shout out. Oh yeah. And we keep driving for this place called Sugar Mountain that I've been to many times. And uh, we get there at like one thirty in the morning, crash at a Best Western, wake up the next morning and then drive the three miles to the mountain. And it's all good. Like I, we rent snowboards for the guys that don't have them, and you know we get all dialed in and 
go to the top of the mountain and uh, at the bottom of the mountain, it's beautiful. Top of the mountain, it is so foggy, you can barely see the ground. And um, Now, real quick, Mike, for, for people that are used to, I don't know, snowboarding in Colorado or even snowboarding in SoCal, like at Big Bear or something, uh, you know, that's just a few thousand feet. What uh, What's it like to snowboard in North Carolina? It's actually pretty good. and But this is coming from a guy that learned to snowboard in New York. It's just ice. This is a lot of man-made snow, but it's it's like 50 degrees out. It's not cold. Um, there's ice. It's a little slushy, but it's great. You know, it's, it's February in North Carolina, and I'm going to ride slush. Don't care. It's all good. And um, we roll down the mountain for our first run at the time of our lives. You really can't see very well at the top half of the mountain, but you know, it's all good. Get down to the bottom, hook up with some other friends, go back up to the top. And as I'm coming down the second time, I'm carving up, there's these really cool banks on the right side of the mountain and carving up one, come down, carve up another one. And and they're not real tall at the bank, seven or eight feet tall. And on the second one, I carve up the top of it, nothing on the other side of it. But I didn't see that. Oh. And so just, I'm going way too fast, and I just go end over end into a probably seven or eight deep ditch. And I, you know, I lay there for a second, and I'm like, all right, this hurts a little, but I'm probably okay. You know, I, I didn't hurt my bell. I didn't hurt my arms. I feel like everything's fine. I go to get up, and I can't get up. And I'm like, all right, I don't think I've broke anything. This, uh, this, I'm just, I just took it really bad. So I started snowboarding down the mountain, and about an eighth of a mile later, I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore. So I unstrap, and I just start limping down the mountain for like half a mile. Oh, dude. And, <laughs> and I'm finally like, all right, I, I can't continue to limp down the mountain, so I'm, I'm just going to sit my butt on the board and ride it. But then I got a little paranoid about like my leg getting caught in the snow and bending again so i'm like okay i'm not gonna not gonna ride the board down so i see this chair lift off to my right and we're we're halfway down the mountain at this point but i see this chair lift i'm like i'm gonna hike uphill to this chair lift and ride it down like i've seen other people do so i limp my ass up to this lift get to it and homeboy won't let me ride it down no. <laughs> and I'm like, now is that, at that on, point dude. did you say do you know who i am no no i, I <laughs> never, literally said that uh, that will not happen but i'm like come on buddy i'm like i can't walk any further and, and he, he actually doesn't speak english it was interesting and i'm like trying to make the international symbol broken i don't think i'm broken but i'm making it i'm like come on let me ride this lift down he's like sorry boss el jefe won't let me okay i'm like well will you call ski patrol which is the last thing i want to do i do not want to be that guy strapped down to a gurney on a toboggan getting towed back down there you know just the toe of shame but uh i got i I literally have no option at this point so ski patrol shows up super nice guy on a snowboard he's got a toboggan i don't have to get strapped down in it because i'm not dying i just sit in it i'm kind of holding my board and i take the ride down the mountain which is super fun and way faster those guys haul ass i've gone i i dislocated my shoulder in mammoth and the guy hauled ass down. Well, yeah, because he's got other people to rescue. It was way more fun than You're, me doing it on my own. They get commissioned off how many people they uh, bring down the mountain. He was going so fast that my when I got into the toboggan or whatever, that stretcher thing, uh-huh. uh, my arm, my right shoulder was still dislocated. When I got to the bottom, it had the bouncing snapped it back in. Well, that's part of the service they provide. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. No, so Mike's, Mike's reminding me of something like when he's like, I don't want to be the embarrassment of that guy on the back of the tob- toboggan, right? Yeah. Uh, I remember I was uh, out surfing one day. And I got caught in a rip current. For those of you who don't live at the beach, a rip current is basically this channel underwater that spits you way out to sea. And so the only way to get out of it is to go parallel to the shore. And so I'm like, man, this sucks because I, I was like way out. Like I was, I was getting pretty far where I'm like, this is going to suck getting back in. So I'm going parallel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little Baywatch action there. And instead of uh, some really attractive blonde running to the beach, it was uh, 
two dudes. But they brought the jet ski out. Well, actually, first the boat came to me, and they're like, "Hey, dude, you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just swimming parallel." I'm like, "Just uh, you know, yank me over, and then I'll just I'll paddle in." They go, "No, no, we got guys coming for you." I look on the beach. <laughs> there's two lifeguard trucks, so embarrassing, with, with flashing red lights, and a dude on a jet ski <laughs> that comes out. And then I had to hold on to the back and get yes, towed in. Oh, and I'm the like, toe of shame. Yeah. And then you get up, and then people are like, "Is this guy <laughs> drowning? Is he dead?" Oh, this able-bodied you know piece of sh- just stood up and walked out. <laughs> of the water what's his problem that, that's literally the last time i think i ever local. went surfing and you're local uh, yeah <laughs> yeah totally uh, well, yeah so that, that's that's what that was my initial reaction was i do not want to take the ride of shame <laughs> but once i got on it it was really fun and this dude's <laughs> hauling ass like he's on a snowboard he's got the the toboggan behind him with me in it i'm holding my board and my right arm i'm holding on to like a bungee cord in the left and we're just bombing this hill and uh, as we go down, every now and again, I just hear this whistle, and I, I don't really think much of it. But where the ski hut is for ski patrol is at the very bottom of the bunny slope. Now, at this point, it's like two afternoon on a Friday. It looked like the 405 freeway. I'm like, we are running into fools. Just little kids and grandmas, they're all going to get knocked down by this dude. Except all of a sudden, he just lays on the whistle like full time. And I sit there and it's just like the sea just parts for this dude in this toboggan and everybody's staring at me like looking for <laughs> a dead guy. <laughs> Except I'm just in I'm in the back of this toboggan just eating snow off this guy's snowboard and just like <laughs> woohoo all the way down, you know? And we get down to the bottom and I tell him, I'm like, dude, that was an awesome ride. Thank you. Like I didn't even care about the snow hitting me in the face. He's like, oh, dude, I'm sorry about that. I'm like, no good. It tasted great. I was thirsty anyway. He's like, bro, that's that's pond water. You don't want to eat that snow. Like, oh, yeah, man-made. Got it. Okay. And so uh, he, he literally parked us right on the AstroTurf ramp leading into, like, the infirmary. And so I, like, hobble out and get in there, and they put me on a bed, and we take my boot off. And my ankle looks like – did you ever see Big Trouble in Little China? Yes. Remember when the dude gets pissed off at the end and explodes? <laughs> like his, my foot looked like his feet when he blew up in that thing. I was oh. like, whoa. And, uh, Is that when you went into shock? In, no, no. Well, I still don't know it's broken yet. And uh, the guy that towed me in, he's like, yeah, your pulse is good. You probably just ripped some ligaments and some tendons. And I was like, oh, well, all right, well, that's no big deal. So I like ice it for half an hour slam my boot on and go to the bar and i tell my kid i'm like just go up with your friends and keep riding it was literally our second run i was like i'm not gonna ruin this for everybody just i'll hang here so i sat up in the uh in the bar and just nursed one cocktail because i still gotta drive home and i sat there for like four hours you mean in your stick shift dotson right so (laughs) my left my left leg is the one i've trashed and so uh, clutch foot yeah it's a stick shift car and so we uh we go to leave and I like hobble out and I'm actually feeling not a lot of pain. I gotta be honest. I got I'm not in that much pain. I just know I can't really put any weight on this thing. So I get in the car and I start driving and every time I clutch, I just feel something crunchy in my leg. Oh and, uh, God. <laughs> so for like a solid hour I'm driving us home and finally I'm like, I don't think this is cool. I probably shouldn't drive anymore. And so I jump in another car, I let my buddy drive us home and then we'll we got home and it was like a five hour ride. By the time we get out there, I can't hobble anymore. And my wife beats me in the driveway at like 11 o'clock at night. She, I haven't told her what's happened. She's like, why are you limping? And I was like, ah, I might've slipped and fell while I was snowboarding. You know? and, uh, Not that you were so hucking next- yourself over an eight foot berm into a trench. He was trying to do a double. No, no. <laughs> d- d- didn't, didn't 720 that, snowboarder so. die. <laughs> Full send, bro. <laughs> oh, it was so extreme. Um, and so uh, the next morning, I get up and I, and my leg, it, it doesn't look good. I was like, oh, crap. So we go to urgent care and they x-ray and they're like, yeah, you've broke your leg. I was like, oh. So where did okay, you break it? Good. Was it femur? Was it, well, femur's no, way up. I, I know. Break, like, was it yeah, tibia? Yeah, I broke the long, the long bone on the outside of your leg. Um, so it's not the one you're putting weight on. It's just the one stabilizing everything. It's Got it. The, your shin? Fib, like where? Fib, Fibula, Fibia? not the shin, not the one in the middle, okay. but on the outside of your calf. We're clearly not so it's little, doctors here. Yeah, so de- if you look at the outside of your leg on your calf, running from your knee down to your ankle, that there's a long bone there called the fibula. I think it's the name of it. 
and uh and there's one on the inside of your leg too and those kind of stabilize your leg and your ankle and so the one down the middle of your shin that's the one you put all your weight on the other ones just stabilize you and so i'm tripping because i'm the next day i'm supposed to be on a plane to film roadkill and i had to call everybody and be like hey uh i broke my leg yeah so so there was that and then uh you know, they, they found somebody else. So they're, they're actually out filming it right now in Nashville and I'm, I'm at home, but, um, I went to a surgeon today cause I was tripping. I was like, Oh my God, how long is this going to take? And, uh, let me guess. The surgeon, the surgeon said like, everything would have been great if you didn't try and drive home. Well, that was the wild part was I told him <laughs> what happened. He looked at me like I was a psycho <laughs> and, uh, and he's like, are you on anything right now? I'm like, no, no. I'm like, I took two Advil last night. I said, but I'm, I'm not on anything right now because I don't know what you were going to tell me to do. And so he's like, okay, well, the good news is uh, if you're going to break a bone, that's the one you want to break. And if you're going to break it, that's the manner in which you want to break it. And somehow it's not moved out of the place. He's like, so you don't wow. need surgery. He's like, you just need a boot and stay off it for two weeks. And then, and then after that, you can put a little weight on it. And he's like, in six weeks – you should be close to normal. He says, you're going to have pain for the next year. You're going to know you did this. Oh, oh dude. But, you, uh, but, but you'll be back to normal. I'm like, I got to be honest, dude. I'm not in much pain now. So whatever you're telling me probably can't be how, that bad. So. How old are you now, Mike? Oh, I'm old. I'm 49 now. I just had a birthday. Dude, mine's oh, coming up. I'm, happy birthday. I'm going to be uh, 46, which is super weird. And I will tell you, in Moab uh, several years ago, I crashed on my mountain bike and broke my elbow. And I was same thing as you. Like I crashed. I'm like, oh, that hurts, but I think I'm okay. And so when I stood up to straighten out my arm to pick up my bike, it went, <laughs> and I went, oh, and I had to hike like a mile and a half off the trail with uh, Shane Kassad from Bilstein because we were riding together. And then Christian oh. Hazel drove my manual Jeep to the hospital for me. And then I ended up doing all that stuff. My dad had to fly from SoCal to Moab to help me get home. And they basically give you like enough pain pills to get you through like 24 or 48 hours. And they're like, after this, it constipates you. You're just on Advil. So same thing. Lots of ibuprofen. My dad flies into town and like, I'm a mess. Like I can't move my arm and it's like, I can't sleep. It's crazy. Hang out in town for a few days, head home. And like my dad trying to shift my Jeep, he hasn't driven a stick in like, you know, 25 years. I think after about the first seven or eight grinds of all of my gears, I'm like, get out. So he's like, your mom, you know, your mom's not going to like this. So I ended up driving home because it was my left <laughs> arm that I, that I busted. So I still had my legs. I still had my shifting arm. I think we called my mom and she's like, so is dad driving? He's, and my dad's like, no, he won't let me. She's like, what? And I drove the whole way home. I'm like, yeah, no, we, we got this. But that reminds me of, uh, of that where same thing where you're like, I, I can do it, but I'll tell you, dude, he, it's a year. It's a year. At least. It sucks. Yeah, it really blows because I, I like doing stuff. Like I'm if I'm not in the backyard playing basketball with my kids, we're you know, we're riding jet skis or we're skateboarding or whatever. So that that's the part I'm so like three days ago what I was most excited about was buying a car and going snowboarding. Today what I'm most excited about is the idea that I can walk from the refrigerator to the kitchen <laughs> table and then you, just one trip. Funny how priorities can change so easily. Cup. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I want, I want to make one trip, not three trips, and get the, the plate, the fork, and the cup to the table without dropping anything. And oh, oh my God, your cr- crutches are the worst things ever. Oh. I'm thankful, but I, I totally took for granted the ability to walk until, you know, three yeah. days ago. Yeah. yeah. About that. <laughs> so uh okay you've got a lot of other stuff going on so okay so good news uh roadkill's still filming uh obviously big announcement that uh the motor trend uh streaming service is going away but you guys are getting your stuff transferred over to uh discovery and max right so it'll still be available yeah it's it's a weird time right now um Super weird yeah I I found out uh, I, I think I found out after most people found out that uh, Roadkill will be on Max. Um, a lot of the other Motor Trend shows are going to Discovery Plus, and the Motor Trend app streaming service is. Uh, I love the term they used. It sounds so great. Sunsetting. Sunsetting. Yeah. Sunsetting. <laughs> at, the, at the end yeah. of March. For for those of you who don't like, know, it's uh, going away. 
Yeah, so basically, long story short, uh, there was a joint venture between Motor Trend, uh, its previous owner, and Discovery. Warner Brothers bought Discovery, Discovery, Warner Brothers Discovery, the new company, finished buying up Motor Trend, and so now they're making the changes that they wanted, and they obviously didn't need three streaming services. And, and they so... didn't need print either, did they? <laughs> Not in the off-road <laughs> space, they no, didn't. They didn't. Uh, or a podcast <laughs> nope. in, about trucks. <laughs> So yeah, I, and if you're a subscriber this time, I feel like it's slightly better than all the other times. Cause like, I remember when they started shutting down magazines, when Holman and I were there, like if you subscribe to, you know, sport truck, all of a sudden you would get like off road or yeah. gardening, like yeah, stuff either you, one. you you weren't <laughs> asking for it, you know, at least in this case, they're like, okay, motor trend subscribers, you're going to get discovery, which, yeah, is going to have a lot of home renovation stuff you might not care about, but they do have car shows. Yeah, they do yeah, have car shows. Stuff. And, well, and I heard that the motor trend price, which is like five ninety nine, is staying for now for the motor trend subscriber, even though they're getting more on the discovery platform. So that's cool because like, I remember when they you know, shut down four-wheeler, they're like, oh, we're going to move you over to uh, motor trend. And I'm sure all the four-wheeler subscribers are like, sweet, I always really, wait, what? So, no, it's it's good because Discovery is a good network. You know, they've got all the Gold Rush shows and all the, you know, like no, that kind of stuff. What? Isn't Gold Rush on history? Is it history? No, I think it's Discovery. It Discovery? Oh, it is Discovery. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but they might they might be owned by Discovery too. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. I I, I thought they were two different companies. They, history yeah, was they, one and then like history is A and E, that company. Yeah, with like Smithsonian yeah, or something. Yeah, all that and stuff. And then, and then Discovery, HBO Discovery and all yeah. that in Discovery. Yeah, I love I'm a, I've always been a Discovery is Shark Week, dude. Come come on, yeah. So once a week or I, <laughs> once a year, <laughs> once whatever. A year, whatever exactly. Yeah. B- bottom line, Roadkill's still alive. Fryberger and yep. Finnegan are going to be out in the world doing things, except for the couple episodes because Mike had to go auger himself into like yeah. a uh, trench. Yeah, a ditch. So Mike, before you were a crip, you were working on a three thousand <laughs> horsepower. Yeah, dude, ouch. <laughs> Not even gimp. Just no, just a straight, tri- crip. Just straight up, oh. dude. It's him and Snoop Crip walking. Straight up, smashing on the guy, yeah, exactly. man. Yeah. So you were working on a three thousand horsepower billet LS mystery car. What's up with that? Yeah, the motors together. We're about to dyno it, actually. But what um, is the mystery car? Because I don't. At last I saw, I, you hadn't announced it. So I'd like you to do that here, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I would, but I'm not on any painkillers, so it's not going to happen. Oh, boo. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I've learned my lesson about saying, look at this cool thing. And yeah, by the way, it's not going to run for another year or two. And I don't have any content. And yeah. And so, like, I have a Cadillac that people have known about for two plus years now. It still doesn't run. And so, uh, I have a F100 like, just like that, Mike. Yep. Yeah, you you guys know, and yeah. so I don't I don't want to say anything until it's actually happening. I I, I, can, I can appreciate that. That's I can. Fair. So, but can you? What's up with the the three thousand horsepower engine? Can you tell us the story behind that? Yeah, yeah. I um, it doesn't belong in the car I'm putting it into, as usual. That oh, Datsun, um, the Datsun, that Datsun five ten is gonna be I sick. It. <laughs> it, it probably weighs it's, as much uh, as the Datsun, uh, probably. It's LS based. Um, it'll have one turbo. Uh, it's a Noonan block with CID heads, and um, it's being built by a guy named Stefan Rossi, who's actually local to you guys. He's in like Torrance, um, and uh, he's got a company called Ace Racing Engines. It's cool, and and I I went LS because if the goal for the car is to it's going to be a street car that I'm going to drag race to do events like Hot Rod Drag Week. And if you're going to go to an event like that and you're going to break like I normally do, it's good to have something other people have. And so yep, totally Part, um, parts availability. Right. If nothing else, I can borrow a starter from somebody or I can go to a, you know, an auto zone or O'Reilly and get some parts for this thing. So that's why I chose an LS motor. So you and I were texting yesterday and then you're like, hey, uh, by the way, great coming on the show. But uh, I got a question and that is uh, I need to buy a new truck. And I'm like. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not doing this here. We'll save it for tomorrow. So let's rehash that, that conversation that started. Cause I think, uh, I think your friends over the truck show podcast are going to help you, uh, narrow down your choices. So Mike, are you looking to buy a new truck because you're pulling that new race trailer that you bought? Uh, yeah, that's part of it. And this is a lovely segue, by the way. We've talked about alligators, broken legs, and snowboarding and dots. <laughs> that's why we like having you on, dude. Uh-huh. It's been too long. We, we haven't caught up in a while. About, uh, 
<laughs> might as well talk about trucks on the truck sh- you know, show. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, yeah. So I, um, as you know, I've, I've got an issue where I've, I've owned a lot of ramp trucks and, uh, and they're great. I still have one. Some say but it's more really, than an issue. Some say it's an addiction uh, or a disability. It was one of the two. Well, I, yeah, I'm not in denial. I mean, I, I still look at them every day. You know, there's, there's ones I haven't experienced. I kind of want to. But uh, not today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> um, Did you see the way? Wait, 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 hold on. Back up. He said ones that I want to experience. Right. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get yeah, in I, it. I don't, just, I don't need to own them, or not for very long. I think you, know, you just have to get this, it out of your system. Yeah, I, I kind of want to know what it's like for some of these other ones. Dude, you, know, you had a truck I, called Square Force One. I mean, come on, it doesn't get any better. Freaking awesome. <laughs> that one was incredible. That was one of the best and, uh, names I, of well, any I vehicle I ever. Have, I have the roadkill ramp truck still. Um, but it, you know, I gotta be honest. I've thought about selling it because it eats up a lot of space. And then my daily driver is a half ton Tundra. And so I'm thought instead of having two damn trucks, let me just get one that will, I can daily and then they'll tow the race trailer and I'm not paying insurance on two things. I'm not storing one giant ramp truck anymore. And so, the roadkill ramp truck, I think, is going to go away pretty soon, and I think I'm going to sell or trade the Tundra in on something else that will haul the race trailer. And so I hit up Holman, uh, I think yesterday, actually, yeah, for two reasons. I, I needed to know about new trucks because I don't know about new trucks, but also because I couldn't find on my calendar when we were doing this podcast. Because <laughs> <laughs> I scheduled it in, like, December or something. Yeah. Oh, I know. I, I had ago. just pushed out the calendar for, like, three months. And uh, I think we were talking. I'm like, yeah, here's the link. Just whatever. And you, I think you said, oh, I, I'm I'm busy in the beginning part of the year, but uh, you know, it opens up in February. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And I look, it's like eight weeks later. It's like eight weeks later. Here's Mike Finnegan <laughs> yeah. on the uh, Truck Show podcast. <laughs> Well, and I, I couldn't find it on my calendar. And so Holman's like, yeah, it's tomorrow. I was like, cool, thank God I texted you. Too. <laughs> yeah. ah, we probably <laughs> missed it. We would have texted you five minutes before. So let's talk about your requirements for this truck. And also what you yes. think you need. Okay, so uh, five days a week, I'm driving my kids to school. On the weekends, we're going somewhere. I have a 28-foot race trailer that fully loaded down is probably going to be 11,000 pounds. About 12 times a year, I'm driving long distance cross country. And what sparked this whole thing is the Tundra has the very worst seats I've ever driven cross country in in my life. They are so damn hard. What year is and it? And so it's a 2021, last year of the V8. Yeah. And um, the truck itself, love it. I'm on, I'm on my, I think, second time. I was going to say, you've and, had a few uh, of those. Yeah, and it drinks gas. Yeah, yeah. You, you kind of don't even want to look at that gauge. And so I love the truck, hate the seats. I looked at, you know, is there a new Sequoia or some other Tundra or SUV that has butt massagers or more comfortable seats that I can swap into this thing. Even I got to make my own brackets. And the answer is no, like a brand new Tundra, you can't get an ass massager. And I'm like, that's weird. And, and so I've ridden in a couple of trucks that friends have, and I'm like, you have seat massagers. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, that would be incredible when I drive cross country, my legs are falling asleep. You yeah. Know? yeah. It makes and a difference. So I've, I've literally looked online at, a new GMC Denali solely because I like the cool tailgate with the speakers and the flip down thing. And then I, I see it's got a, it's got a butt massager and I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay. You know, some of the questions I have are if I was to go with the six, two, is it going to eat push rods and lifters? Like some of the older DOD stuff. I don't necessarily need a diesel for what I'm doing. And I kind of don't want to deal with def and limp modes and whatever BS comes along with a modern diesel. However, I have no experience with any of that stuff either. So I'm coming to the source, you guys. All right. So uh, have, having uh, placed all of your uh, requirements into our AI system here mm-hmm. at the, the Truck, Truck Show, Show Podcast, Podcast computer. All right. So here's the thing. You're already out of the 1500 class right there. So you're done because you got to tow an 11,000, let's let's say maybe even 12,000 pound trailer. Most of the half tons okay. are bumping up to about 95 to about maybe 115, but I wouldn't 
and, and some of them, I think the Ford F one fifty has like a ridiculous like, oh, we'll do thirteen. Don't do it. No. Um, trucks too light, okay. aluminum body, all that stuff. Anything over ten, I always tell people move up into the HD class. So now you kind of have a couple choices. So okay. we have this thing on the Truck Show podcast called diesel inappropriateness, and that's when people go out and they buy the diesel. But they don't use it enough. They don't work it enough to get the EGTs up, to get the engine warm, you know, lots of uh, short trips. So they suffer from regen so they, all the time. Yeah, so it's always regening and it's always killing mileage. And so what all we that don't stuff. know, Holman, is his daily commute, dropping yeah. his kids off at school and such. Is it less than 20 minutes round trip? Yep. Okay. Okay. So here's the thing. You go to the GM trucks. The new interior is awesome. Yes, they have ass massagers. The The tuning on the suspension is so much better on that truck than it used to be. It's a great truck. The problem is the gas engine in that truck is a 6.6. Six. It's no. And don't it, want it is just anemic. And it doesn't, it, it's not the best gas engine out there, I don't think. And I would push you toward gas because I think that your trips are too short to really enjoy diesel. And when you go to a heavy duty with a gas uh, engine, here's the benefits. It's about 10,000 plus cheaper to get into. Oil changes are cheaper. Fuel economy mm. is way worse, but you have enough uh, fuel tank size, usually in the high 30s or low 40s to where range isn't an issue. Uh, you don't have to worry about a secondary fluid like DEF. You don't have to worry about regen. You don't have to worry about a turbocharger. And you start going, you know, gas around town and, and for the 12 times a year or so that you're going to tow, I think you'll be fine. In fact, uh, our, our mutual friend Dave Chappelle a few years ago uh, asked me the same question. And I have pointed him in the direction of a Ford Super D with, with the uh, 7.3 gas. And he loves that thing. And he tows his junk all over the country with that uh and he's got a dually. I think he's got a uh, 350. Yeah. The only I- issue with those, the weak spot, is the transmission. You know, when you step up to the diesel, all of them, including yep. the Ram, if you get the HO with the Ison transmission, it's a 10-speed, it's really stout. So you get the GMC or the Chevy, you get the Allison with a 10-speed, you get the Ford with a 10-speed. So all yep. the big diesels are com- going to come with a really stout trans, which you're going to want but I, the way I, you drive with it, I think Ford a, has fixed some of the ten-speed gas trans issues, and the ones that I've seen have issues are people who have a way over gross vehicle weight rating. Like my buddy Mark, he's got a seven-three that he tows stuff because he's a lands uh, a contractor and does landscaping and big boulders and all that. Mm-hmm. Mark tows with his F two fifty, not even a three fifty, with the seven-three, about fifteen to sixteen thousand pounds because he'll have a like trailer full of dirt. And then it rains at night, and he's hauling that thing around. So, mm. yeah, he's had some trans issues. That being said, I think uh, I think for your use case, it would be fine. Uh, if you're going gas, I'd probably shoot you to Super Duty. The ride's awesome. Uh, lots of tech. They do have the seat massagers. And it's all around just a really great truck. I love the GMs. You're going from a solid axle to IFS when you move to GM. But I don't like that 6.6. I don't think it's worthy enough. Mike, do you care about solid axle versus IFS? Do you do you have a no, tendency it'll, towards it'll, one? It'll never it'll never see off road. Um, it goes in the four wheel drive like two or three times a year for the snow, and that's about it. Okay. Do you think he needs a dually, or should he just get a twenty five hundred? No, no, I'd get a twenty five hundred. Twelve thousand pounds. Yeah, get a twenty five hundred. Rides better. Now you can look at the Rams, which have a great interior and coil springs in the back, so they're probably the best riding. But they're the six four Hemi in that is is no. probably right in there with the uh, six six. I just think if you go gas, the seven three Godzilla. So those are big blocks, whereas the Chevy and the Ram are basically small blocks. So you're getting a lot of torque out of them. And Ford's also has a version of that. So it's a little smaller. It's a six eight. So you can go to a six eight or seven three on gas. So if you want to have a little bit better fuel economy, you don't need as much towing. F two fifty with the six eight might just be like that sweet spot. And again, you get all the stuff the GM has. I think a nicer interior. You get the butt with massager Ford. with the Ford. Yeah, I think in the uh, in the heavy duty gas market, I think anything over let's call it eleven or twelve thousand pounds, Ford is the way to go. I think that you're on that cusp where you're towing, and I think if you went to the Ford, you'd have enough overhead that if you needed to tow a bigger trailer, you wouldn't have any issues with it at all. So your your choices are four vehicles. You've got the Chevy 66, the GMC 66, both uh, you know the Duramax, Ram with a diesel, 6.7 Cummins, or you have the Ford 
Well, you could do. Oh, sorry, he's got five. So yeah, Ford. Actually, you have six. Ford with a six seven, yeah. or Ford with a seven three. I don't consider the six eight a choice. Why? I, I because I think he's just going to work it too hard. I think he's going to end up with a it's lot a more big gear. I, I get it, but no, nah, it's. You're just saying you, you just say because it's the bigger engine. You no, should because go for it's the bigger engine. Yes, and he doesn't care about fuel economy. He's been driving a Tundra. You mean it's Lightning's like he's biased. been? He has a TRX. Yeah, he yeah. he. You know what his so. license plate is on that thing, right? Stolen. <laughs> oh, oh, wait yeah. a minute. Wait, do, hey, did you, you hear know, the story about that? Story. Yeah, I follow him on Instagram. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so the his license. When I get a new, when I get a new truck, I need to know all about the defeat device, so that can't happen to me. Uh, by the way, Lightning's license plate is Yummy Gas. Just so you know. <laughs> Lightning. Uh, I don't know if I messaged you or not, but I have a friend with a killer GPS tracking company. No, but, uh, you did not. I have it on every, okay. I have it on everything I own, and oh, it's it's incredible. Yes, shoot shoot us that info because I've got a uh, bright red Wrangler 392 that I'd like to keep for a long time. So I haven't announced this, and I don't know when that's going to air. I hope that gets stolen for you. <laughs> the guy, the guys from uh, CompuStar are going to be flying down from their home uh, base in Seattle and installing a full system with Drone Mobile, which is their GPS. So I'm, wow, I'm, there you go. I'm going that route. All right. So Mike, just send route. me your information for your friend. And then no, we'll I'm still very interested. We need to talk about it for sure. Well, I, I think <laughs> the thing lately is everybody's stuff's getting stolen. I want to help the world. I want to talk to as many security and, and find out as many options as possible. Uh, I've got an air tag hidden in mine behind a bunch of layers of bolts and stuff. So, uh, and then there's a way if you pop a air tag apart, you can take the speaker out so that somebody can't ping it and find it in your vehicle. And then it totally works fine. Then there's no, there's no, uh, noise. Yeah, dude, it, it would. So we said this on the podcast, you probably didn't hear it cause you were up breaking your leg, but like we, like <laughs> my truck wouldn't exist. My truck would be, I don't know where it would be. Mexico, Mexico probably Mexico. Yeah. It would be off-road at some cartel owner's house. Yeah. And like, you know what they do? They it, steal it, and instead of using it for drug running, they'd be like, oh, this thing's got a nice sound system in it. It's got 20-inch wheels all blacked out. Dude, it's got yeah. wheelwood brakes. Yeah, the, bo- the like boss the, is going to be all over this one. Is, like, dude, it's so weird to know that they were so close. They, they were so close to getting it. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, 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 it Wait, sucks, but I'm, but I'm happy. I'm still a little bit of PTSD, because like, I've had a yes. couple cars broke into you, and you could see their fingerprints everywhere. And after that, it was hard to like, you kind of feel gutted. You finally, I, I kind of didn't want to get in the car again. Yeah. A little bit. Like, luckily they didn't leave. There weren't footprints all over the place. The only thing they did is when the glass busted, some little pieces of glass were on my roll track, my electric roll top, uh, you know, bed cover. And the glass, when I, when I re- opened it up, it pulled the glass with it and scratched the surface of the roll track. That's really the only remnants that I can see for knock on wood. I went and inspected all the, you know, the, the seats, there were no rips. Luckily the glass was kind of localized to the back seat. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah. What was closer? Your TRX being stolen or Mike landing that snowboard trick? (laughs) (laughs) I think uh, my, my truck to being stolen. Yes. Was closer. closer. Yes. Uh, Sorry about that, Mike. Yeah. There was nothing on the side oh, of his sorry. berm. Like, it was just dirt in a ravine. Hey, by the way, just uh, just so uh, while we're on the, the, the topic of uh, the truck, so I don't think we talked about it. Price? No, but Mike's rich, whatever. Oh, yeah. He's selling a ramp truck with he roadkill is, inside. This would be fine. He's president of horsepower. That's you right. Know what I mean? uh, so the 6.8 is 400 horse, 445 pound-feet of torque, and the 7.3 uh, big gasser goes up to 430 horsepower and 485 pound-feet of torque. So... I mean, that's that's healthy, yeah, but then dude. you get to the diesel, and then you're getting a, a thousand. thousand pound feet. Yeah, of but you're also getting all the bad things that come with diesel. So on the way here, Mike, I borrowed CJC Off Road. They're out of Long Beach, California, and they are one of the exclusive distributors of Carly suspension. They do, you know, Carly's known for Rams and 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 Ford straight axles, etc. Anyway, so I take their 23 HO, and it's got right off the lot bone stock 1200 pound feet of torque. And I'm telling you, it feels very similar to the TRX. It doesn't have the zero to 60 time or any of that. But like when you're at 80 and you just lean into it, it's bonkers how powerful that thing is. It feels, you do not feel like you're in a 9,000 pound truck. It's weird. The acceleration is just nuts. And I can't imagine how easy it would. So I pulled with our 19 Ford at work at Banks. I pulled with our 22 Ford. And those have been wonderful. I can't imagine pulling with the HO. 
It's just a, a Are you machine. about to say too much power? Nope. I saw it forming. I, I saw your lips forming too much power. I wasn't going to. You need to be called out on that immediately. I wasn't going to say that. Oh, I wasn't going to say close. I was going to say I, say about that. I was going to say mania. Um my ramp truck has 1300 foot pounds of torque. The thing's a beast. The problem with diesel is the same problem I have with full-time electric vehicles. When you run out, you better have planned ahead. I more than once I've been like, well, I'm really low. I need to get some diesel. And I pull into gas stations late at night that aren't open. The pumps aren't on or just flat out no diesel. And so in my daily driver, that's the first thing I don't want to deal with is, oh, where do I find the diesel? So then you F-250, 7.3 gasser. The answer is a Titan tank. So you get you get I had when I had my lifted dually That's not the rock the answer. crusher I had sixty six gallons. He doesn't. He doesn't want two thousand dollar Phillips. What does it matter? It matters because he, he wants to do forty gallons at a time. Not but when he goes when he goes on a road trip and he knows he's going, he's going to be somewhere in the middle of the night. He's not fueling other vehicles. Then he fills sixty friggin' gallons. No. Oh man, you sound like my ex girlfriend who once told me. She didn't want to fill her tank all the way up because she didn't want to spend that money, that much money on gas. That's different than having another sixty <laughs> gallons on board. <laughs> By the way, I have a three ninety two and filling that sucker up every time. So hurts. I I had the midship. I had a sixty gallon tank uh, midship, and I had a thirty three where the spare tire was. So I had 99 gallons. Yeah, but the problem is you couldn't board. go through it fast enough and you had an algae bloom by the time that I you didn't. used it. I didn't. You I called I, our friends over at dude, Stable. I went. I could drive to Havasu and back without filling up. Yeah, but you still had to pee. I do remember uh, when I was at Sport Truck, I did an article with a company called Transfer Flow, I think was the name yeah, of it. Yeah, sure. They're still and around. They had a, yeah, and I had a, a toolbox transfer tank with a nozzle and everything. And uh, I had it in my 96 Chevy Crew Cab Dually. I remember that truck. 454 gas motor. And fill it up twice, never used it again. See, there you go. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, get it's, the it's, get the Super Duty gasser. You'll be super happy with it. I, I'm actually going to look at it. Do I'm, it. I'm, I'm going to look at it. I've never considered myself a Ford guy. And I got to be honest, I haven't looked at them since the last time they screwed up the way a Dually looked, where they <laughs> basically just took a fleet side bed and yeah. put fender flares on it. I literally haven't looked at it one since then because it was so just all right off putting. Go go drive a gas GMC if you can find it because I guarantee you those are going to be really hard to find on the lot, especially as a, as a Denali. So just drive yeah. just at, just tell me you want to drive a work truck or whatever just so you get a feel for that six six. I guarantee it'll be okay. a lot easier for you to find a uh, a six eight or a seven three gas Ford Super Duty because they're in much higher demand. Drive those things back and forth and then just pay attention to how the torque ramps up, how they feel. The problem with me is for a truck that big, the 6.6 just feels underwhelming. We're driving the 7.3, you're like, yeah, this is this is man's truck right here. Like I, I, the first time I drove a 7.3, I've probably sold to my friends seven 7.3 Super Duties for people. Well, it's because you're on commission from Ford. I, I'm not though. The Ford has never done anything <laughs> no, for me. No, the thing is like, so I was also, <clears throat> Mike, I was never a Ford guy. I actually have never owned a Ford product at all. But or a Ram for that matter, and then you got the yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've been just the GM guy. But w- at Banks, I started getting around more Fords and driving them, and I've really enjoyed cross country trips in them. You know, the stripper models, not so much, but when they're loaded, which you should look, you're old enough, you deserve a nice truck with all the accoutrement. And he's talking about massaging like, seats, he's not I, getting I, an XL. I understand that, like just go, but go balls to the wall, get the moonroof, like the full thing. And Ford has that weird taint poker where it's like they massage, but there's the one that goes up and kind of touches you. Little, like, <laughs> I think you have to sign a waiver or something because uh-huh. yes. it's a you'll be driving, you're like, Whoa, what was that? And you're looking at your truck, like that's a that's a shocker. That's called a for, stain maker, yeah. For, first time that one touches you weird, you you definitely have to have a cigarette or pull over and take a breather because it's it, you feel violated. Uh-huh. After that, you're fine. I feel like it's probably taking DNA samples as some sort of <laughs> yeah. That way they can track your truck when it gets stolen. Yeah. Like there was a time, dude, like, you know, when there was a huge disparity. It was GMC was so far out in front as far as the interiors. Then here comes Ram. All of a sudden, Ram is just no, ball. No. And you know how many people are li- behind. Do you know how many people are listening to you right now and what? swearing at you? Really? Oh, yeah. Well, then who was out front? Ford always had nicer interiors than GM. Really? Yeah. Then the GMC- And Ram, Ram had horrible interiors until about 09. Right. 
And then all of a sudden, and then the the last generation. I mean, obviously Ram is the best interiors of anybody now. GM's catching up, but there's uh, that that new big screen and everything is really nice. So but... like, if it, so, it's me. I'm agreeing with Holman that the Ford Seven Three fits your yeah. use case. Should be should be on your list. That's what yeah, we're saying for sure. The Six Eight, no. The Seven Three, okay. yes. And then same engine. If, by if the you're, way, if, you're, if you say I'm not going to do the gas, I I think I should go for the diesel because maybe that eleven thousand pound trailer is going to yeah. get fully loaded, and I'm going to GMC twenty five hundred so Duramax. Go, Probably yeah, and then the good. Ford six seven yeah. and the and the Ram last. Yeah, the Ram's a little utilitarian now with the Cummins. It's it's uh, it's not as nice and refined as a daily. That's not saying you can't do it. I still love that truck. I absolutely love that truck. But for your use case, driving the kids around, hooking up a trailer here and there, you need four wheel drive to pull your boat out of the ramp, all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm thinking we gave you some solid choices. But here's the deal: we don't charge for this service, Mike. But what we do want you to do is come back and tell us what you ended up with. Oh, that seems fair. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we'd love to see you uh, come out here and walk into our studio at some point, too. Are you, uh, are you ever did back you this way? you say that because, he's, because he can't walk right yes, now? Yes, that's 100%. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Yeah. You know, if you if I thought you still had one, I, I would, but I, I heard it's like under your house or something or in your she shed right now or yeah. something. I don't yeah, know. we have a shed. We built a, 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 a studio. It's not a studio. <laughs> what the hell's that? It's a shed studio. Mike, I don't have, have we had him on the show since we've been here? No, I think no? this is not. Okay, no, this is the first no. time. So everyone, Universal, the guys from Bill Stein stopped by. We've had a lot of guests in this studio, and everyone has the same reaction: like, this is much better than I expected. They think it's going to be like a tin. That was shed. that was your reaction. <laughs> it was my reaction. Dude, he, he's like, we're not doing it. Po- we're not doing a podcast. But that was for from- different. From that a different, a, that a different shed reasons. in your backyard with lawnmowers. Different reasons, different reasons. It's because Dude. I thought if you know perception's reality, and if it's they awesome. thought we were doing it from a shed in the backyard, like no, oh, I'm not going to advertise with some podcasts, no. you know. But look, they're in freaking Finnegan's got advertisers, and he does it in his garage. So, Dude, I, what I, are you talking about? We have a 43 inch TV. We have surround sound. We have a mini I split. Get it, but There's it's in a your Dr. backyard. Pepper fridge right there. But it's in your backyard. <laughs> okay, because but you have sound, no backyard that could do this. It used to be cool when we were like, oh, we're at Motor Trend. It was big sounding. And they were like, oh, we're going to his backyard. Okay, we're in Motor Trend's backyard now. <laughs> yeah. what, do you, what do you want from me? Well, at least, but it worked. So, congratulations. <laughs> All right, Mike, I got uh, one last question because we always have to go back to food. Uh, living in Georgia, but being from uh, out here in uh, Orange County, mm-hmm. what do you miss? the most like what's your fast food or, or restaurant like when you're uh, craving something and you're in georgia and you're like damn it i can't have that out here what is it any albertos rigobertos humbertos okay Mall, Mexican can food. you explain this to me and lightning i have asked this question and i hope i know we have a lot of southern california listeners this is going to be southern california pompous for a minute so please bear We've with been me doing it a lot lately uh, hold on just uh, mike brought it up so i have to go there <laughs> There is a little chain of Mexican restaurants, and they've taken over older other restaurants. And they're usually white, and they have orange trim. And just like Mike said, it's Albertos, Albiertos, Umbertos. Rigobertos, Umbertos. And it's the same menu, and it's the same looking restaurant with a really similar logo, but they're all named different. What the hell's up with that? Does, can anybody explain this to me? <laughs> so before anyone answers... In Long Beach, yeah, there's a I think seven liquor stores all called Eddie Junior or okay. Eddie's Junior. When I own the clothing store, we like that everyone knows these Eddie Junior stores. I want to go get permission to reprint the shirts. We walk in, the Asian dude behind the counter says, "Oh, do you want do you own this Eddie's? Yes, I own this. I go, we'd like permission. He goes, I don't own the Eddie name. I go, who does? He goes, I don't know. I said, okay. So we go to the next <laughs> Eddie's. He goes. I don't know who owns the Eddie's name. It turns out that there was original Eddie's. There was a guy named Eddie. It wasn't trademarked that because it got so popular, all the other liquor stores call themselves Eddie's with the same yellow and black logo. There is no Eddie anymore. There's no trademarks, and they just copied themselves. There's seven of them in Long Beach. They're all called Eddie's with no relation to each other. Isn't so that what's freaky? that with Umberto's, Alberto's, Rigobertos, Albiertos? They're either copying themselves. I don't know. Lack of originality, or there's a. But uh, the menu's the same. Or there's a some Mexican dude that's syndicating. Or, 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 or uh, yeah, but why is the name the same? 
Are they He's all like cousins? Them all. No, no, you franchise and you have the same name so that you have the power of marketing. No, together. Well, it's a menu. You can you can uh, franchise this name, that yeah, name. It's McDonald's, weird. McSchmonald's, yeah. Mickey D's. I don't yeah, think that's not, how that it's works. It's not Ray Kroc. I don't think they're that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <sophisticated>. exactly. <laughs> but they do have a hell of a good breakfast burrito. Let me tell you. They uh, do. I just it hope is like Chinese restaurants that all have the same pictures of the same food. That's true. Matter. I know. Good. It's all good. I just hope well, some uh, someone who's listening goes. I know the backstory behind that because I would love truck show podcast at gmail.com or the five star hotline six five seven two oh five sixty one oh five. Somebody listening has to know the backstory of why all of these awesome Mexican restaurants look identical and all are named something different. I think they just I'll be each surprised other. if anybody knows. Because like literally in Parker, Arizona, when I would go to the river, there's one there. You know, there's one in San Diego, there's three in Fullerton, like they're everywhere. I don't think anyone really knows. Although if you go to San Diego, you got to go to Taco Fee. That's that's the that's the spot in San Diego. They're the originator no, of the California one. fries. Wait, I want to go back to this. Don't move on. Like this is like a mystery. I know it's a this mystery. Is, this is interesting. I have three yeah, around me here in HP. Come on. Yeah. Well, all right. Your homework is go buy a truck and then tell us about it. Our homework is to figure out why all these Mexican restaurants are exactly the same that have a different name. We need to do one of those Channel Seven Eyewitness News uh, where we investigative we take a, yeah, reporting. To get reporting, and we go. To this all is Holman them. at Rigoberto's. <laughs> this is Holman at Alberto's. <laughs> this is Holman at Alberto's. Yeah. <laughs> what we should do is we should drive this, and why are the menus the we same? We should do. We should take our Nissan Frontier that's out front, uh huh, and we should on Saturday. Find as many as possible. Drive our frontier through the the uh, drive through and ask them how they're related to the other ones and see if any of them give it up. But these are Good like, luck. these are fifteen dollar an know. hour workers. They're not going to know. They might. Yeah. Could you imagine yeah. if we solve that from the uh, seat of our Nissan Frontier? They're not going to know. Like when I was a kid, my first job, I was. If you're lucky if I even showed up. I'm not going to know. <laughs> he doesn't well, know, the, they, he doesn't college, know the company I, Wikipedia. I kept getting jobs just to get the uniform. Like I quit four <laughs> jobs. I'd get the uniform and peace out, and then I'd wear it to a house party. Well, thanks for showing up to guy. the podcast. We got nothing for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, we can send you a shirt. We got a shirt for you. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Wait. Mike. My mic. Which because those are things you don't you give just call away. Him my mic. No, I said I said Mike. 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 <laughs> Where I need that drop for like what was the the Disney Mike 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 Pixar yes. um, Scully D- Scully Mike Monsters Inc. Where do you still have those jerseys? And if so, which which ones are they? No, I don't have them. They were I was a Jiffy Lube tech um, for like a day and a half, just long enough to get the shirt. Okay, I was a cable guy, just long enough to get the shirt. Okay, and uh, Toys R Us. Oh, dude! What would a Toys R Us? No, no, no! He smock. No, no! He stole the Jeffrey uh, costume. Technically, I never actually worked at Toys R Us because I didn't show up, but I got the shirt. <laughs> dude, I have. Uh, a, I have. That, I, I have. At a... home, if you're listening, don't do that. That's no. horrible. Yeah, that's like, I was. I was very young and foolish, and look how I turned out. So don't do that. No, they're gonna look up to you because you're big. You're a big YouTube star now. You know, you know what I have? I'm a guy with a broken leg on a couch right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I have on my shelf in my uh, office? No. Carl's Jr. 69. That's cool. Yeah. A lot of people have that. Yeah. Well, they're they they, they uh, <laughs> they're hard to find toward the end. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That is actually really cool. Uh, I have jer- I have a Coors Light jersey, a Bud Light jersey, although it's not cool anymore. I have a lightning lube jersey. I have four lightning seven, lube is funny though. Four Seven Eleven smocks. Uh huh. I have. I think Why? I, I probably mm. have I, so many weird ones. I, I, you already I named, on, you I named them, on, dude. I'm on a cross. Yeah. I'm on a cross country trip, and I see off to the side lightning lube. I'm like, I'm lightning. I need that. I go in there and I said, Do you have a shirt I can buy? They're like, no. We've got those in the that are super dirty over there. I pick one up. It's grease stained. It's an extra large, and I mean, it's freaking stained. It's scuzzy. And I brought it to a place in the valley when I lived in Burbank, and I gave it. And I go, I'll pay you extra money if you can clean it up. He gave it back to me. Looked brand freaking new. Yeah, because a uniform Still shirt. Have yeah, it was amazing. That's how they make those lightning freaking lube. Why don't you wear it? I can see both of you guys in Foot Locker jerseys. You know, would I get a whistle though? <laughs> well, that's what the happens stripes. when, when well, light, lightning when would be podcast, in Ladies Foot Locker though. When this podcast doesn't work out, that's where we're, we're going. Need those. So, Mike, when you're mobile again <laughs> and you're out this way, <laughs> let us know. Let us know, please, because we'd yeah. love to have you in the pod shed. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll actually be out there, uh, I think, in four weeks. I'll hit you guys up. Dude, seriously. What? Yeah, let me know. Yeah. 
All right. All right. We'll yeah. do. Let's do it. Okay. Well, dude, miss you. Uh, sorry your leg couldn't handle the pressure, and uh, hopefully you heal fast. Ah, thank you. I'm just too extreme for these bones. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, that's a nice, uh, hell of a nice birthday all present right. for your uh, last year of your 40s. If you guys don't watch uh, Finnegan's Garage, you're missing out. Um, uh, you know, I have one last question regarding this, Holman. Okay. Yeah. Mike, how does it feel to be just shy of a million subscribers? Does it eat? Oh, God. Does it, does it eat know. at you? <laughs> he's at nine twenty-five. <laughs> like, he's at oh. nine twenty-five. I'm like, oh, it must hurt. He's like, he's like, how come I just can't get? All to right, a Truck Show podcast listeners, unite! You know, you know, mount up! You know what you need to do? Get Mike over a million. 75,000 of you, we need you. Sub Mike's that would, channel. That there you would go. be insane because uh, YouTube's a weird place right now. YouTube doesn't yeah. care about subscribers anymore. No, no they don't. So, they, don't. Uh, they care about shorts. They, they finally admitted that to me in a meeting. They're like, yeah, don't worry about that anymore. I was like, okay. So I stopped asking people to subscribe because it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. yeah they I, should... I, I want the plaque. I didn't get the plaque I know, for any right? other milestones. Like, I don't have the 100,000 or the half million. Why, why not? I, I would... You have to uh, you have to sign up or something. And I just, no, that's BS. Uh, you do not. Uh, Gail didn't. Banks has one. He got the hundred thousand. We're about to get. You the... think Gail would notice if you took it off his wall? Hell and yeah! Put oh, he's Mike so Finnegan's name on it. Yeah, he's so proud of that. Send thing. it to Mike. <laughs> I'm telling you, Gail's like he loves it because younger people come over to the office. He's like, yeah, I'm a YouTube star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, please don't. Sick Gail on me. I don't. I don't want him telling the whole internet I'm wrong. I've seen him do it to other people on the internet. Yeah, you know, I had a guy come up to me and he's like, "Dude, you know, you know Gail Banks." I'm like, "Yeah, we we got to lunch and stuff all the time." And they're like, "Dude, that's cool." He's like, he's like the industry's Uncle Gail, and he he gives no. <laughs> <f's."> <laughs> no, <That's> awesome. <laughs> no, he does. Did you see the you saw the pedal commander takedown video? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I said, uh, I don't even want to know I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> Listen, Mike. Dude. Mike, here's here's what you need to know. Oh, like, you need to get rid of the ramp truck now because something is telling me Gail is going after ramp trucks next. No, he's and not. you need to you need to make sure you get the most amount of money. I out of know. That thing. I know firsthand that Gail loves Mike. I know that there is zero risk of that happening. He loves zero. you more now that he has more uh, viewers than you. <laughs> no, I, I I actually love Gail and I loved visiting and doing magazine stores there. And I got no nothing to say bad about Gail. Do you I'll remember? You actually, really, dude, the podcast we need is all of us. We need Gail, Mike, you, and me in a room. That would be mayhem. That would be great. Uh, that'd be a great podcast. I would enjoy it because I always learn stuff from him. Okay, well, Mike, it's been uh, great catching up with you. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Because you're you're ending segue. It's like the eighth time we've tried to end it. We just I, love I, Mike I, so much. I, I don't want to. You know what? Let's call our next guest with Mike on the line. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike. Mike has to go heal now so that he can I, be uh, full strength when he comes out I here. I can tell he's wrestling with something. There's quite a bit. He's of putting noise. duct tape around his boot. <laughs> I'm putting my boot back on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got to con, got to contain right. those bones, man. All right, get so some sleep and get some sleep and rest up, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Appreciate buddy. It. All right, miss you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. See ya. Man, I feel like it has been forever since we've read email. Truckshowpodcast at gmail.com, lightning at truckshowpodcast.com, or Holman at truckshowpodcast.com. You email? Yeah. I email. Do it. We email. That's right. Everybody email. Type it up. You email. Proofread. I email. Send it. We email. Click it. Everybody email. All right, who's going first? Want me to start? Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, go for it. All right, um, this one is a uh, oh shoot, this is not a good subject line. Never got a sticker from Tommy. Hmm. Hey guys, listening a couple episodes ago, and Sean said to holler if we never received a Nissan uh, spotting sticker. Uh, so I'm hollering. Attached is the screenshot of the email I sent on March 10th of last year. Oh, it's only a year away. <laughs> Tommy, well done, Lightning. I did Tommy dirty. Yeah, you Ooh, did. Ouch. All right, Tommy, I'm going to continue to not send you stickers. No. No, you I'm not kidding at all. stickers. I, I was kidding. Kidding. Sending you a sticker. Here we go. All right, Jason go. Gaynor uh, writes, Good day, Jets. Lightning, I'm glad you had the forethought to add the super secretive anti-theft device. I was shocked to see your post on Instagram. I thought I would share a story about having two vehicles stolen. When I was 19, I worked at Philmont Scout Ranch. 
Uh, by the way, that's I awesome. Went, I went to Philmont, spent a week there, did a 50-mile hike at Philmont. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. And then I worked at Lost Valley Scout Res- Reservation here in uh in, uh, I've been to Lost California. Valley as well. Yeah. Yep, I worked there for three summers uh, and saved all of my summer pay to buy a six inch lift for my 96 XJ. Pretty dumb to lift it that high, but I was 19, so oh well. I drove the Jeep for about five months, and while visiting my college girlfriend in Charlotte near UNCC, rough hood, I left my Jeep in my friend's apartment complex and walked back with her to the dorm. This was around Christmas vacation time, and I woke the next morning to make it to church so my mother would not be terribly upset with how hungover I was, I walked a mile or a half to the complex to find my Jeep no longer present. My friend that lived there had a spare key to my Jeep in case I locked my keys in the car, and I had one to his truck as well. I called him, and he swore he had nothing to do with it. But I accused him of punking me all the way to the police station. Turns out it was truly stolen. Then I got it back a week later. Body damage, interior trashed, Christmas presents stolen. The little a-holes used the cigarette lighter to make a smiley face in the headliner. Insurance totaled it. I bought it back for 15%, I believe. I was fortunate enough to get a decent amount of money for it. I saved 5000 and then spent the rest of it fixing the Jeep. Back to the 6-inch lift. Death wobble was always there. Steering was awful, and the drive shaft vibrated. I bought the long arm kit, the slip yoke eliminator, and drive shaft. I didn't mess with the body, but it was a great wheeler. And I also added a locker. I saved the $5,000 to buy a 1995 Dodge Ram regular cab 594x4. It was kind of a piece, but it was cool to have two vehicles in college. Fast forward two years, and the Ram needed an alternator. I tried to make the two-hour trip home, but fell about 30 miles short. We got it towed to my dad's fabrication shop, and I went to work the next day. Napa was delivering the alternator later that morning. I checked on the truck when I arrived that morning, and it was in the lot. Once the alternator arrived, I went to move the truck, and it was not there. (laughs) Oh, no. Not again. There was a service truck from the local Mac dealer in the lot beside where my truck was. Turns out the guy was running from something, but picked the wrong truck to steal as my truck broke down 30 minutes down the road when the freshly charged battery died again. So I got that one back same day, but the police trashed my truck, inventorying everything. Not many people have two trucks stolen, but I was able to get both back in some form. I left the keys in the Dodge in case the shop employees had to move the truck to get one of our shop trucks out. Uh, It was a fence-gated lot. Years later, my 2016 GMC did get broken into via the back window, but they didn't get much of anything. Holman, I hate the backsliding glass, too. With all of that, glad your TRX is still with you, Lightning. Jason Gaynor. Damn, he's uh, got some bad stories. He's an unlucky dude. That's not right. No. So I got a question from Thomas. Hey, guys, love the show. I enjoy you doing great work over there. Question or your thoughts? I bought my wife a new truck, a 2024 Chevy LT double cab blue color gas engine with an eight foot box. When I got it home, I went to go get the manual to study what all the buttons were for. I found out that it doesn't come with a manual, only a safety book. I called the dealer and he said that it doesn't come with one. You have to look it up online. So I ordered one from Helms for 50 bucks plus $40 shipping and handling. So $90. For paying $66,000 for a truck, it should come with a manual, you'd think. That's why I get OVR Magazine in paper. Great magazine, by the way. Thanks. Thomas Stokel from Michigan. So, uh, Thomas, yeah, uh, so many cars and trucks just come with a QR code and a piece of paper, yep. and you got to watch all or, the videos. Or they have an app, or you know, most of them have a paper manual like you bought from Helms, or there's a digital version of it on their website. I know GMC has one under the vehicle support tab, and it's it's weird. I don't know why you... It's tough because know. when you need to know something quickly... You don't want to do it on your phone. No, you don't want to do it on your yeah. phone, or you're in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, where's the button? How do I unlatch this thing or whatever? And it's it's never convenient. But they're trying to save paper and be green and all that stuff. And it's easy. Yeah. And the, it, as a manufacturer of parts, I will say that it is easier... In one respect, yep. in that it's more convenient because if I do an installation video or a how-to video and I realize I've either changed how the, the functionality of the thing works, I can change the video, leave the QR code the same. And so you as a consumer don't know that I've changed it 10 right. times, right? So that's convenient for us and we can kind of evolve with the product. I still it, like paper manuals. I, I agree. Uh, we got this one from uh, Mr. X. If you remember, we uh, had asked in previous episodes if there are any Mr. X's out there who might give us... Uh, I don't know, a, a little, uh, shine a little light on topics. And this letter is from a Mr. X. It has to do with uh, uh, potential uh, Cummins and Ram divorcing. 
it's funny. This one doesn't have his name. It says, not sent from my iPhone. Uh, it says, let's give Lightning one here. His assumption was right that there has been prior consideration to drop Cummins. Holman probably already knows the story. But back in 2014, Ram Trucks looked at using the new Holland 6.7. So it's an identical motor, at least the way business cases are done. Uh, and they would have to do revalidation with the new motor as well as a per piece price. That said, even though Case New Holland and FCA were owned by the same family, there was no discount in price and it would have cost Ram a couple of thousand more per motor to switch. So there was no advantage to switching other than buying from a family owned business instead of Cummins. As we know with Daimler, owning formerly Chrysler large contracts are given to subsidiaries and suppliers that are partially owned by the manufacturers or interested parties. An example of that was when they switched from the NV series transmission on the heavy duty to the Daimler. Once they became part of FCA, Daimler took every opportunity to raise the price of the manual transmission since it was the only one and they knew it would cost a fortune to replace it. There was consideration to switch to a Fiat manual transmission, but clearly they did not have anything heavy duty enough for the trucks. So that's just my two cents from Mr. X. Well, wait a minute. <clears throat> so that that's about the past. It's not about current, right? I mean... Well, yeah, but he's telling you kind of how things work behind the scenes yeah. and that this isn't the first time that that has come up. Okay. So take that history. What's well, great. And, and we it. appreciate you sharing this, but so I want to know- stop trashing our listeners, Lightning. I'm not. I'm saying that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. And right, I just I, leave I, it at that. I want to know- Say thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. T-H-A-K-Y-O-U. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to know, is Ram going to dump Cummins? That's what I want to know. And no one's telling us that. Truck Show Podcast details from Ryan Cornbloom. Hey, whole man and frightening. Hey, uh, uh, it's Ryan here. Uh, Send you guys Canadian snacks every once in a while. Yes, that's you. Ryan, thank you very much. It's very kind. Hey, Lightning. Ugh. I've sent you guys Frontier pictures a few times, and I haven't received decals yet. And care packages. And yet Lightning refuses to send you a sticker. I'm wondering... If I would be able to get one sent to me and when might you guys get some merch? So Ryan, God's honest truth. I've sent you stickers. I swear to you, I have sent them and I, I and some Mountie in customs has them on his truck. I'm telling you, I, and I was told to send them just regular USPS United Postal Service, because then you don't get tariffed or whatever happens across the Canadian border. I sent them. I don't know why you didn't get them. I will resend them, and I'm going to send them to your office address this time. And so. also put on the note, no Mounties. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that, please. Okay. All right, got this one from uh, Trevor Nemero. says, uh, carb in-use off-road diesel-fueled fleet regulations. And he says, uh, when you wonder why construction takes so long and costs so much in California, and he printed out these uh, new carb requirements, which say, uh, as you may be aware, California Air Resource Board CARB uses new in-use off-road diesel fuel fleet regulations went into effect January 1st, 2024. The revised laws can be found in California Code of Regulations, Title 13, Section 2449, General Requirements for In-Use Off-Road Diesel Fueled Fleets, and Sections 2449.1, Performance Requirements. And according to this, the requirements are as follows. Among other requirements, CARB's new regulations require owners of applicable fleets to procure R99 or R100 renewable diesel for all off-road equipment, 25 horsepower or greater, maintain fuel log records and or proof of inability to procure renewable diesel, submit annual affirmations to CAR by March 1st that the fleets comply with the performance requirements outlined in Section 2449.1 or submit proof of applicable exemptions, obtain annual certificates of reported compliance from CARB and maintain records demonstrating renewable diesel fuel compliance for a period of three years on a rolling basis from the date each fuel transaction is completed. What a pile of steaming horse... Oh, my God. So that's every tractor all in California. Them. Yep. Well, and everything else that uses diesel. Think of all the equipment. Generators, probably. Yeah. Dear God. Yeah, it's just... Come on. Somebody needs to Come get on. elected in here and then just start cutting regs out. It's ridiculous. You can't do anything. Then you... I, I got one more. All right. Well, I was just going to tell you, did you hear some of this the other wacky stuff that California tried to do this week? No, no, no. Yeah. So this one is from Cameron Stone. Street. And I think this is Cameron out of uh, Brisbane, Australia, from what I recall. Uh-oh. 
His email says, still haven't received my stickers. <laughs> well done, lady. Uh, I, now, I, Cameron, I, I don't know if I've sent them to you. I'm going to say I haven't. So, so he did include his address back when he originally emailed me in June of 23. So, uh, Cameron, I'll send you some stickers. Sure you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, lightning at truckshowpodcast.com, Holden at truckshowpodcast.com, or the general email inbox, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. The Truck Show, The Truck Show, The Truck Show, oh, oh. All right, don't forget to follow us on socials at Truck Show Podcast, at LBC Lightning, at Sean P. Holman. Give us a follow, check out what we're doing. Uh, shout out to our buddy Dave, who uh, once again has uh, been elevating the uh, <laughs> Truck Show Podcast, Graham. Do you? I have had so many people reach out, and they're like, uh, dude, I don't know what you're doing, but it's really funny. Do you like him Taking our heads and putting them on other people's bodies. I don't know what that's all stuff. about. <laughs> I'm like it's some strange uh, digital voodoo or something like that. I don't know where he's getting all the heads. You're not big like I don't know that I've taken that many photos. I keep seeing me pop up in different. I'm like I, I don't recall taking that photo. It's it's funny. It's, it is funny. It's, and he's going like he's gone deep. <laughs> I've seen him take stuff that is years and years old. Like he stole from our own Instagram to repost it on our Instagram. Of stuff that I don't even remember us doing. I'm saying it's yeah. freaking weird. I'm enjoying it as well. well. If you guys are enjoying it as uh, as much as we are, please uh, tell us all about it. 657-205-6105. That is the five-star hotline. And don't forget, leave us a review on Spotify, on Apple, and even on Facebook. Yeah, we have like 50 reviews on Facebook or something. We so, do? Yeah, go for it. Why not? And uh, please don't forget to send us your events. We've got quite a few events coming up in March. Don't forget to head to truckshowpodcast.com and uh, click on the events tab, and you'll find out uh, that from March 6th through 10th is the Arizona Classic Bronco Stampede. From March 14th through 16th in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, is the 35th annual Run to the Sun Car and Truck Show. From March 23rd to 31st in Moab, Utah, is the annual Easter Jeep Safari. March 30th in Kernsville, North Carolina. That would be the Kernsville Jeep Jam. And uh, if you have something in March that you want us to throw up on our events page, please email us, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. I don't think there's much room on that calendar page. I think there's like 80 events on that page so far. Keep them coming. All right. Keep them coming. All out. I got nothing but time, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have a day job. I got no, I don't do anything at night. I just, all I do is just events. Just send them to me. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's fine. Hey guys, it's Miles, your producer here, hey, what's Lightning. Up? Yeah. I'd be happy to help you with uploading events, but I'm just a computerized voice. I don't have arms, hands, or fingers. I cannot type. I'm sad. <laughs> oh, this is wow. Weird. Uh, all right. Well, I don't want to end the show on that note. So uh, thanks to our good friend Mike Finnegan for coming on and uh, sharing his uh, his recent woes with his bum leg, but also allowing us to help him choose a, uh, a new truck. And, of course, uh, if you're in the market for a new truck, head on over to NissanUSA.com or your local Nissan dealer where you can check out the Frontier, the Titan, or the Titan XD. Put a Nissan Titan on your potential shopping list, and I'm sure you're going to be impressed with what you see. And if you're not a fan of your oil temps running hot, 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 and head over to bankspower.com. Oh. <laughs> what about your hot? co-host running hot? <laughs> yeah, you always run hot. Nah. Anyway, if you don't like your oil temps running hot when you're towing, head over to bankspower.com where you can get an upgraded oil cooler kit for your 01 to 19 Duramax. You will enjoy having those temps where they should be, in the middle of the gauge and not in the red. Head over to bankspower.com to find yours. Uh, would you uh, say it's the equivalent of uh, having holes in your chonies? Wait, what? Uh, Keeps your insides from uh, overheating. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. With the larger turbo, the modified P-Pump, bigger fuel delivery valves, and new head bolts, Chase has informed us that we should be taking our Cummins wagon from 300 horsepower to somewhere between 800 and 850 horsepower. Yeah, buddy.